If you enjoy this type of pattern, please tap that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Do you have pattern tutorial ideas? I'm all ears. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We're moving on with part three as we continue then the study of possibilities. In today's lesson we're gonna go from rounds number one all through 17 and so we're going to be working on all these jagged edges in order to get ourselves. We are going backwards so we are working from the outside of this star and then getting more and more um, towards the center. The beautiful thing about this afghan here when you look at a bigger photo is that the more you do of this the faster it gets. It's like C to C. We're doing the big stuff first and as we get more to the center you'll notice that each round will get faster and faster. So let me tell you a few things about this because the repeating on this is actually really quite simple and you'll be pleasantly surprised on how easy it's going to be. So you will have noticed that you have eight sides for the star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That means that each segment like this is a repeat. So once you understand how to do one, you know how to do all eight. And so the easy repeating of this is actually at the top of the peak. So we have the peaks and then the valleys. And so once you understand that, it becomes very simple to be able to follow around. Here's the trick though in this design. You'll notice that it's looking like it's really sweeping but that ends up kind of just leveling off. As I was designing this, we have to be able to get back to a circle eventually and round 17, the very final round of today's video, you'll be in a full circle format and then the rest of it will be just finishing off the circle uh, going to round number 26 and that'll be next time. So what we have to do is we have to pay attention to the, the peaks and the valleys and the best thing that you can do for yourself is to use use stitch markers on the peaks of this so you understand where it is. Now the stitch count that I gave you is actually really nice and it's in the pattern itself but let me explain to you what that stitch count is just in case that you're confused in any way. So let's go to the diagram. I gave you the stitch counts per side. So this is the point of one point of the star. Okay so it comes on out. So when I gave you the amount of stitches per side it's per half of this point. You gotta remember that the point is like a mirror. So this is the, the peak here and this is the valley and then it goes back to the peak. So what happens on one side has to reflect over to the other side. And so for example it says round one I said that there's 20 stitches. So what that is, it's the number of stitches from the, the, the top of the peak here to the stitch that is just before the bottom valley. And so there's a total of 20 of those here. So when I'm giving you the stitch counts per side, that's what that is. So the bottom valley one never counts as a stitch on the side because if I give you that as, as that, it, you'll be off because it only appears one time in each peak. The other thing that you'll notice is that as this progresses and we start rounding off towards the top of those val are the top of the peaks here, we're going to be using single crochets to create that. And so we're going to be changing out then this whole idea of using a space as we are into the peaks and we're going to start more rounded off so that we'll be getting three single crochets then in this top but we still have to pay attention to the middle one. So as I'm giving you the instructions on this whole thing is that I'm going to tell you where to place those stitch markers. So you'll need a total of eight of those to be able to follow and I really strongly recommend that so that you can keep a count. And then you may wanna keep a count of what your counts are for going down the sides just in case that you're getting confused in any way. So without further ado, let's go uh, to the uh, sample itself. I'm going to be demonstrating just a section of this because it's a repeating in a circle and what I'm going to do is that I'll use the sample that you see behind me here and we're going to be filling all this in and going ourselves all the way to the circle itself. So at this point in the pattern itself we're on page number five and you should have everything connected to each other to create that eight point star that is in the center. And when we go to start this we're going to be starting on, on the interior and work our way all the way around. And each time we're passing through that we're going to be eliminating stitches on most of those rounds so that each one of these rounds as we do it will get faster and faster as you work your way towards the center. So what we're going to do then we're going to start at a point just like you see here and we're going to come down and then back up. So each one of these points is exactly the same information and I'm gonna rely on you to be able to uh, go all the way around. So looking at the sample here is that I'm going to show you what that is here 
and then we're gonna come on down and etc. So this would be here, up here, this would be attaching to another octagon so that this is just going to be repeating itself. So I'm going to concentrate on what each point looks like as we go on. So we're, let's start on page number five. We're gonna start with the first round. We're going to use the color G and G is the medium gray mix and this is where we're going to begin right now. On page number 12 is the stitch key diagram. So everything that you see within the diagram itself, these are what it means. So when you go to look at it, we're going to start our way and I already showed you this page here of the stitch counts per side. This is the top of the peak. We're gonna come on down and then back up and it just repeats all the way around. So as I've given you the instruction, I'm gonna tell you what those uh, peaks are because most of, the, most of the time we have to start either with a standing stitch or just a chain four in order to begin. So we're gonna pick up right here on round number one and we're gonna come on down and then back up and etc. and work our way. So let's go. So we're going to start here in a top peak here. So there will be another one attached here. So you're gonna start right here. I don't care what you need to do. You need to make sure that you get your 20 stitches down and 20 stitches up and we'll have the five together at the base here. You need to make sure that you have your 20 or it's game over for you. So if you are off by a stitch, throw in an extra stitch. And if you're missing a stitch, throw in a stitch, etc you need to do what you need to do. Let's start off and we're going to start on the corner itself and you're gonna go right into a chain space on the corner. And what we're going to do is just attach and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three. That's a double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space and in the same corner you want to place in another double crochet. That first double crochet that I just placed in will count as one of the 20 going down. So what I would do if you were not watching me, we have spaces if you recall and we also have uh, single crochets. So we need to make sure that we include that one and start immediately into the next single crochet and make sure that we get 20 stitches going down before we get to the bottom piece. So let's just get yourself started and you wanna take your time with each one of these um, sides as you begin because it's gonna matter. So there it's considered now two. The next one is gonna go into a space. That's gonna be three. The next one is in double, is in a stitch. This is four. The next one's in a space. Okay, so I'm just gonna start counting. So there's a total of five done so far. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, 19, and 20. So that would be considered my 20 going down. So now what I want to do is put in my five together. So just make it look good if it's not making sense for you. So you're gonna have two before you get to the, to the join. You'll have one in the join and then two after. And so you should finish when it comes to over to here, you should finish in the space right here. So let's just start and do that. So let's start in the next one. So let's do five together. So you go in and hold it. You go into the stitch and hold it. You go into where it's joining. Just make it look good. Okay and now this one, you, this is the first stitch out and then this is the next space on this side. So you should have a total of six on there, six loops. Pull through all six. And now that's just officially turned and now you're gonna go back up the other side. So that doesn't not count as a stitch on this side. So we're going to get ourselves all the way to 20 back to the top of here. So starting in the next stitch, you're gonna just start and let's just count those. So we have one and then use the space is two and three four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen and you still have the top space to use. This is the corner space. So that's gonna be a double crochet into that space and therefore you have 20 going up on this side and to turn and to go back down the other side then you chain one and then you come back into the same space and then you start all over and you start to count to 20 again. So you got your 20 going down, you'll do your five together at the base, 20 going back up and then at the top you'll chain one so that you can go down. So you're just gonna fill this in as you know it and what I'm just gonna do is that I'm just gonna go a few extra stitches and then I will meet you at the end of this round. So make sure your stitch counts are right because the remaining of this is so reliant on this to be accurate and I'll be right back in a moment. So please continue around and I'll see you back here in a few seconds. So pretending that I've gone all the way around, I'm coming up the, the slope on where I started you see that and I wanna finish this off. You gotta remember that we started off with the chain four. So the last one that will equal 20 is already technically there because the chain four um, is counting as a first double crochet and a chain one space. So you're just gonna stop just before you finish it. Okay and you look where that space is. Okay and there's the stitch and then this is the corner space so it's already technically done. So then you're just going to join it to the top of the chain three and then this is the end of that. Okay so what you wanna do then is to eliminate that color out and so let me just take a look what color that is. So we're then going to eliminate this. We'll change it to the color D as in dog and so I will just show you just the one time on just fastening off the yarn. We've already covered this already in part number one but what I would technically do before you end up with too many loose ends at the end. It's just I would do it as you go turn it to the back side and just drag the yarn through. So I'm also going to advise you to put in a stitch marker. So using a color yarn that you can identify uh, that will help you keep account of your stuff. I'm gonna show you where to place those stitch markers now and then we will be using those as we go and that will really help you like a lot. So let's continue that next. So let's place in our stitch markers maybe about two feet long and I want you to cut eight of these just spare yarn and just cut those and what I want you to do is that on the peaks if there's a space I want you to place the stitch marker so it's going through the space and we're going to keep moving that up so that we can continue to see it and as this starts to round about you're going to put it into the middle one of the three single crochets that'll be in the top peak and this will help you keep your stitch counts going down and up and so each one of these peaks should have um, a stitch marker in it. So you just do another one for the next one and etc. and just keep on adding those in. So we'll be moving those up as we go and I strongly recommend so that you can always see where those uh, peaks are going to be. So let's move on now to round number two using the color D and in my case this is the color um, aqua and let's begin that next. So back to the diagram we go. Round number two is going to be a really fun round. We're going to be introducing small popcorns in here and we're going to be creating larger than normal spaces that we have so that we can hide these in so that these popcorn look like they're suspending on their own. So, so let's begin round number two starting where you finished off and I need you to start with a slip knot and we'll put that on and we'll attach it to the chain one space at the top of the peak. And I'm going to just attach and we're going to chain four which will count as your first double crochet and a chain one space. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space. What I recommend, see this um, stitch marker that you have, place it between what you're about to do and so it'll be just sitting there ready. So when you go to do your uh, peaks just do that and then I want you to double crochet back into that same spot. Noticing that I'm going up over top of the stragglers as well to hide that in. So this stitch marker has now been moved there. So every time you get to the corner please do that. So we're now going to continue and we're going to double crochet the next double crochet that's here.
The next stitch is going to be a small popcorn. So to do the small popcorns they consist of three double crochets. So let's just slam in three double crochets into that same stitch. So we have one, two, and three. And I need you to remove this off the hook. I need you to go to the first one of the grouping of three and stick your hook from the, in the stitch going towards the back and loop that back on and pull that through and chain one will lock it. This will be popping up a little bit. You can't really see it yet but it will. Just you have to bear with me. Now I need you to chain three. So one, two, three. And now you have to skip a total of two stitches. So one, two and go to the third and do another small popcorn. We're gonna do this all the way down towards the valley. So it's gonna be three double crochets into that one. The third one away. So one, two, and three. And release it and go to the first one of the grouping of three. Loop it back on. Chain one to lock it and then chain three. So one, two, three. Do you see this chain three? That's gonna get buried so you'll never see it in the future. So skipping two and begin the small popcorn and the third one away. So I'm gonna keep the camera going and we're just doing the same thing till we get close to the peak or sorry close to the valley. Okay so release it. Chain one to lock it and then chain three. So one, two, three. Skipping two, small popcorn in the next. So you can see in the diagram on how many popcorns that it is. It's one, two, three, four, five. There's a total of six popcorns that go down. So that means that if there's a mirror action there's gonna be six small popcorns going up on the other side. So one, two, three, skipping two. So do you see why the counting was so important in the last round? Is that we have to verify that the counts are always gonna be accurate because everything is, is really depending on those counts to be accurate. So one, two, three. And then we're gonna do something really special in the base. Actually the really special one is next time. <laughs> so you're getting off easy on this one. Okay, so I've got how many that I can see. I can see a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So after you get that last one done here, you are going to skip a total of just only one and you're going to put in a five together using the remaining of the stitches. So just skip one and use the next five in a row for a five together double crochet. So this is the very base of the valley. Okay, so this is a nice easy round. To go back up the next side you're going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three. You're only gonna skip one stitch and then you're going to put in a small popcorn in the next. And so now what we've already done going down we're just doing exactly the same thing but going back up. Okay, so chain three, skipping two, So what I wanted to do with some of this stuff is that I made the popcorn so it wasn't as elaborate as it was in the original um, octagon um, so that it wasn't gonna be as time consuming for you. I'm also lazy as well so I did it for myself more than anybody. So you notice in that we're skipping over two stitches but we're chaining three. The reason for we, we wanna do that is that that chain is going to be hidden underneath stitches and we need it to be a little bit longer so that we can get, do that. So that's kind of why that's there. So lessons that I've learned over the years. So remember within each round that we do where it's gonna get faster and faster so it's gonna feel slow in the beginning. You just have to trust me.
So how many popcorns did we say that were going up and down? And if you said six, that's the right answer. So what I wanna do is that I wanna verify that. So going up on the other side, I have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And right where I'm sitting in the stitch counts, it's right. So I know that my stitch counts are accurate. So once you have the last small popcorn in, you will just double crochet the next and then you are gonna come in and do your corner. So the corners are always gonna be the same. So it'll be double crochet, chain one, and I would move that stitch marker up and so when you put in the next double crochet, it's already gonna be sitting and into the same spot so that you can do it. So what you can do is that we have video chapters in this video. So you can reverse back to this one. This is round number two and you can start by going down and then back up and it's the same time each time you do the eight sections. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to meet you at the end of this round in just a few moments and just continue the journey as you go. So I'm pretending that I'm going all the way back around and so you'll skip the two and then you'll just double crochet into the one before the corner and then that's where you're going to finish. Okay, so the corner is already done the way that we started this. We're just gonna go in into that last stitch and so we just need to join it with a slip stitch to the top, to the chain three. Remember there's chain four so just go to the third one and you're going to end your journey here and we're going to continue then to round number three using the color F and the color F is going to be grass green. So we're going to be doing that next and everything is gonna look pretty cool. You wait to the next round and what we're gonna do. It's so neat and that's what our journey is next time. So in round number three with the color F, it's gonna be grass green. We're gonna do some really fun stuff. So I really want to throw the kitchen sink at this thing which is probably why it looks cool. And so we're going to begin our journey by doing a standing single crochet. I'll show you how to do that so don't freak out. And then we're going to just apply then the next two stitches to be single crochets and then we're gonna be introducing front post single crochets around those popcorns and those are gonna make those pop out like, like candy. It's gonna be awesome. These double crochets are going to go into the double crochets that you skipped but what you wanna do that chain three that we had, we wanna put it underneath the stitch. Not behind but right underneath the stitch so that it gets hidden so that it doesn't look like you can see the color so that it will pop out like Christmas uh, lights really. And so we're gonna head on our way do, down doing that. We're gonna do a special thing at the, the base like I promised you in the last round but it ended up being five double crochets together. We're gonna continue with the same fashion of just doing some really fun stuff and then what we do going down we do going up the other way and then you'll do that all the way around. Let's begin round number three and let's like let's really start making magic together like crochet wise. So let's begin our round number three and let's start making magic and we're gonna start with the slip knot and we wanna slam it onto the hook. And do you see where we have the stitch markers? So you wanna move those up as you went so if they're already in place you already know where it is. So you wanna put this onto the hook, your slip knot onto the hook and we're gonna do a standing single crochet first. So going in and you want to pull through but don't pull it through the first loop. Okay, keep it on there so you see two. Then pull through the two. That's a standing single crochet and it looks so much better than to attach it chain one and then single crochet. You're doing everything all in one step. I then need you to chain one and see that stitch marker? Put it through here and then into the same spot single crochet again and then the stitch marker is already in position for you next time. And now let's begin to go down the side. So the next two, see these double crochets? You're gonna make those as single crochets each. So one and two. Now you see that there's a small popcorn here. We're going to make those into a front post single crochet and so you wanna pop that out forward and you wanna go in behind it from the side and back out the other side here. Wrap the hook, pull through and then pull through the two. That's a standing, that's sorry, that's a front post single crochet. This is going to make that pop out like candy. This is when you're really gonna get excited. Now, see these two that you skipped here? What I want you to do is that we're gonna double crochet this but see this chain three? We are going to double crochet and slam that uh, chain three underneath the stitch. So when you go into the stitch, push that chain three down so that it gets stuck up underneath the stitch and you're just going to double crochet right up over top of it and it gets stuck underneath the stitch. So it's underneath, it's not behind. It's stuck right in the stitch itself and you'll do both of those double crochets the same way. See? Isn't that candy? 
So here's a small popcorn. So make that as a front post single crochet. So just pop in behind, pull through, pull through two. And now you have these two. So again going in to double crochet down here, let it go over that chain so it gets underneath the stitch and this is going to make those popcorns jump out like candy. Are you loving it? So leave me a comment if you're loving that. <laughs> if you're not liking it so much you can still leave me a comment but I'm gonna say oh that's nice. <laughs> I love that. I just think it's so pretty and this is what makes this afghan really amazing with these pop out colors. So you're gonna continue in the same fashion going down. So you do those double crochets over top and if it's a small popcorn just make it as a front post single crochet. And so we're gonna get to the bottom really soon. You don't hear me counting because I'm watching the stitch work and I'm let, letting it play the story. So let's do this special uh, one here at the end. Okay. So the last popcorn is part of the, that one and this popcorn in the side is part of that. So what we have to do is that we have to put a stitch in this popcorn, in here, in the base, in here, and then in this popcorn. Is that gonna just throw your mind off? It's easy, watch. So we're here at the base and what we need to do is put five stitches together. So we are going to maintain what we already know. These popcorns, we're gonna continue to have those as a front post. These here, they're gonna be the double crochet and in the, the, the very valley, it'll be a single crochet. So let's start and let me show you how to bring all those five together as one. This is called a special cluster. So go in behind the popcorn first and pull through and leave it on the hook. Come into this double crochet and make it a double crochet. So wrap the hook and coming in and letting that chain just fall down into the stitch and then pull through two and hold. So you don't wanna finish any of these stitches. Here this is where they all come together. This is going to be a single crochet so just yarn over it and pull through. Here this will be a double crochet so wrap and going in and push that chain down, pull through and then pull through two. And then we have the last popcorn to worry about and that's gonna be the front post single. So how many loops do you see on the hook? There should be a total of six because there's five stitches that come together as one. So once you have all that done, pull through the all six and those just became your special cluster. Now we're gonna go up the other side. So the next two stitches here are going to be where you're gonna start and you'll put in your double crochets. Okay and you're trapping down the chain and then you'll front post your your popcorns. So it's exactly what you know but it's going up the hill. So you can see it's popping out really quite beautifully. So we continue up the hill and I'm just paying attention to where the popcorns kind of start uh, stop so that I can know what to do. And here's the last popcorn. So this will be the single uh, front post single crochet. So we have two double crochets before the point. So you'll have those as a single each and then here's the point. So you single crochet, chain one and position this stitch marker so it's going through. So then when you single crochet back into there, the stitch marker will be in the middle. And then you're gonna head down the other side doing exactly the same thing. So the first two are single crochets and then you'll do your front post single around the popcorn and then dropping down like you have. So I need you to go all the way around. This is round number three and just take your time and it's really neat and you'll see what you just created is going to be magical and I'll be right back in a moment. Okay, so I'm coming all the way back around and I have my two drop down double crochets. I still have the two single crochets that are left at the top before I get to the corner and the corner is already technically done when I get all the way around. So I'm just going to slip stitch 
then to the finish. And we're going to be ending this color and moving on to the color C. And in my case the color C will be uh, purple. So it'll be really kind of neat. You see how the stitch working is just popping out and it's gonna be awesome. And let's move on to round number four in just a moment. So let's go on to round number four. So round number four is a little bit of a holiday and what we have to do is that we're going to do some single crochets to get ourselves started. We'll do a standing single crochet and then we're going to just single crochet a set number and then we need to get a little bit taller as we get closer to the valley. So we're gonna be introducing half double crochets and then the very bottom here is gonna be a five together double crochet. So what we're trying to do is that we're trying to get this valley here to start rounding off more and more so that we can get ourselves more to the circle as we continue upward. What we do on one side is the mirror on the other so you'll have your two half double crochets and then your singles all the way back up to the top. So without further ado let's uh, head on into round number four using the color C and in my case it will be purple. So we're gonna start off the peak. Remember that I'm pretending I'm going all the way around because the steps are the same and right where you have the stitch mark here is exactly the, the corner. So that's where you're gonna start. So I want you to put it onto the hook with the slip knot already and go right into the corner peak and pull through and then you have the two loops pull through the two. That's a standing single crochet like we talked about before. Chain one and before you do anything move the stitch marker up so that it will come in the middle and then single crochet back into the same corner spot and therefore that'll be marked for you next time. This will save you a lot of grief. We're now going to single crochet the next 14 stitches down. So let's start with the very first one. It's right here. Sometimes these corners can over uh, power uh, corners. So we have to make sure that we kind of peel it back so that we can see that stitch. So that's your first one and we have 14 in a row. So we have one and let's count together. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now the next two stitches that you have are going to be a half double crochet each. So let's just do that. So we'll have double crochet that one and then the next one. And then we're gonna be with a five together double crochet over the next five stitches. And so you'll do that. So let's begin. We've already done the five together before. So using the five stitches right in the center you should end up with six here. So pull through all six. Okay. Then we start going up the other side just how we had it. So the first two out is going to be a half double crochet each. And then if your stitch counts are right the next 14 single crochets are going up. So let's count those up together and check. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen takes you to the stitch right before the space. If something is wrong and you have to add a space or add a stitch please do that. If your counts are not right, if you have too many just do a two together single crochet to eliminate a stitch if you have to. And so you have fourteen going up and then you have your corner. So the corner is a single crochet chain one and move that stitch marker up and then single crochet back in to that same corner spot and then begin your journey going back down again. And you're gonna notice that it's gonna start rounding off at the base here which is exactly what we're trying to do. And I need you to do this all the way around for round number four. So I'm pretending I'm going all the way around and I'm gonna do my 14 single crochets going up. Remember that the corner is already done on the very first one here. Okay, so see how it looks like here? It looks like it's wrong. That's because the slip stitch can make it look like there's an extra stitch when there's not. So make sure that you don't make that mistake. 
Okay, so there's not an extra stitch here. And if you're not sure, just look to where the stitches are going underneath and you see that this section here doesn't belong to anything. That's a slip stitch. So just once you have that going up, your 14 up, slip stitch it to the first one of the standing single crochet and then that'll call it quits for that color. So this color is then done for round number four. Round number five as we continue will be the color B and in my case it'll be the sunflower. So it'll be yellow and that's what we're gonna start next, number five. So let's go on to number five. So number five is another holiday. It's just single crochets going down and then just before we're gonna have a half double crochet. We're going to, uh, those will be two together. We're gonna do a two together for double crochet and then the very base will be a treble. So we're going to do uh, the same thing going up on the other side. So we're going to have it a little bit more rounded off by doing it this way and we're moving on to round number five next. So let's begin row number five or round number five. We're going to continue and we're gonna do a standing single crochet and you already have the marked where it is, where the point is. Okay, so we'll do a standing single crochet and chain one and move the stitch marker up and then single crochet back into the same one. So now we're gonna continue down the hill. So we're going to do a 13 single crochets first. So that's the magic number, so 13. So let's count those out together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We're gonna do a two together for half double crochet next. So over the next two stitches, let's put those two together. So wrap the hook and going into the next stitch, pull through and leave it on the hook and then wrap the hook and go into the next stitch after that and pull through. You should see five loops on the hook. So pull through all five loops. So that was a half to uh, double crochet two together. We're then going to do the next two stitches of a two together for double crochet. So wrap the hook and going in, pull, pull through, pull through two and hold and then do the next one the same way. So wrap and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Now pull through all three loops and that's a two together um, double crochet. In here, this is the top of the five together. This will be a treble so wrap the hook twice and this will be that. This is making it rounded off even more. That's why you're doing it that way. So let's go back up the other side. So the first two out will be a two together double crochet. The next two will be a half double crochet two together. And then we have 13 single crochets going back up to the peak. So we'll count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen should take you right before the peak, which is true. So in the peak then you'll single crochet, move the stitch marker up and before you continue along just chain one and single crochet so that that stitch marker is then still in the middle. Then you're gonna go down your 13 as I mentioned. You'll do your half double crochet two together, double crochet two together and then the very base uh, then will be a treble. So this is what it will look like here and you can see it's more rounding and that's exactly what we're trying to do. So let's continue that. This is round number five and I'll see you at the end of the round in just a few moments. So coming all the way back to the start. So gotta make sure that you don't accidentally put in an extra stitch and it's the slip stitching that can always make it look like it's extra. See how it kinda looks off? That's the slip stitching that creates that look in order to, to be like that. So and if you're not sure just count your stitches up going up the other side and make sure it's the same number and then slip stitch to the beginning standing single crochet. So we're now going to end this color and we're going to do with the color, let me just take a look, color A and color A is espresso. 
the thing about espresso and what we're about to do on number six is that we need to turn the entire afghan upside down and do it on the wrong side because the texture only appears on the opposite side of the work. So if I do it on the good side of the work all the texture will be underneath the blanket instead of on top. So I want you to finish this yarn and I want you to turn the blanket over and then we're gonna continue in the peak and I'll show you how to do that next and that will be happening in round number six. So you'll notice round number six is in the color red. I did that on purpose so that it will call your attention that something is wrong and do you see the arrows going in the opposite direction? We are going to be doing this on the wrong side of the work. The reason for that this is the crinkle stitch and the only way that the crinkle stitch can actually have the texture so that it's on the good side is that you have to crochet this on the back of a project in order for it to pop out forward. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just start at the same peak of where you're finishing and what we're going to do is we're gonna go in the opposite direction but it's the same kind of stitch work going down. We're gonna do crinkle stitching going down. The base here there's going to be a half double crochet two together there's going to be a double crochet two together and then we have a special stitch right here at the base and we'll talk about that when we get there. That's a special, what do I say that called a special cluster. So I'll have that and then we do the opposite going up. So it's a really neat technique and it allows you to have the texture on the good side. So let's all turn our blankets upside down and let's begin our journey. So let's begin round number six. We're gonna start with a standing double crochet. Okay and the stitch marker is telling us where that spot is uh, where the where it is right here. So in order to do the standing double crochet we're going to put it onto the hook and we wanna pinch down on top of the hook so that it doesn't spin and we want to go into the corner space. And then you're just gonna pull, pull it through like that. Chain one and move the stitch marker up so that it comes between and I need you to double crochet into that same spot where the corner is. So now the stitch marker is now moved. So now we're gonna continue down this side here and let's begin to do that. So we're gonna start off and we need to do a total of six sets. So the first one will be single crochet and then the next one is going to be a treble. So that's one of six. So then we'll do that again. So single into the next and then treble into the next. This is two of six and we'll keep counting those out. So we have a single and then a treble. That's three of six. Then a single and a treble. This is four of six. Single and treble. It's five of six a single and a treble and this is six of six. Now we have to sweep along the base here. So the next two in a row are each going to be a half double, are, are going to be a half double crochet two together. So use the next two stitches and put those as a half double crochet two together. The next two stitches are going to be a single, or sorry, a double crochet two together. And then the next one here, do you see it's on the treble? The next one is a special cluster. So how we're gonna do that is that you'll wrap the hook and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold it. You wrap the hook twice and going into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. And then into the same stitch, wrap the once and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. So you'll see a total of four loops on the hook. Pull through all four and that's a special cluster. So now we're gonna continue up the other side. So the first two out will be a, uh, used as a double crochet two together. The next two will be used as a half double crochet two together. And then we start doing the crinkle stitch going up the other side. So we're gonna start this time with treble first and then a single. So let's, and we'll do that total of six times. So treble and then a single. So that's one of six. Treble and a single. That's just two of six. Treble and a single. This is three of six. This is treble and single. This is four of six. We have a treble 
and then a single. This is five of six. It's a treble. And then a single. And that takes you to the last stitch before the corner. So you see where this is. This is why these stitch markers are so helpful. So in the corner you're going to put in a double crochet, chain one, you might as well move that stitch marker while you're there and then double crochet back into the same one and then you're going to do exactly what you just did by going down and then back up and you'll see that it's more rounding off as well. So please do this all the way around for round number six. So I'm pretending I'm going all the way around so the last stitch before the corner is just a single crochet and then that's it. Okay, so the corner's already done so you'll slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of this yarn. So let's fasten that off. You'll weave in your ends. So be a good boy. <laughs> uh, in my case that I haven't been doing it but you can do it at home. And what we're gonna do is go on to number seven but before you do that I need you to turn the blanket back over to the right side of the work, the good side and you will see that the texture that we just created is appearing and it's gonna look awesome and we're gonna move on to round number seven next with the color E and in case my, my case it's gonna be dark pink. Let's move on to round number seven. We're now going to move on to round number seven. We're back on the right side of the work so the good side and this time um, we're going to be starting with a standing single chain one and then a standing in the corner and then we're gonna be putting in these single crochets going down that we're gonna have a two together half double crochet. We'll have a two together um, double crochet. We're going to have a, um, a cluster here. This is a two together um, front post treble and that's gonna go around this cluster here which is gonna make it pop out and then we're going to then continue back up the other side. So it's actually pretty easy and I always find that when I do these crinkle stitches that if I don't have rows before or after that are just flat it there's no point doing the crinkle stitch so that's why I have it doing like this. Let's go on to number seven using the color dark pink and this is the color E on the right side of the work. So we're now coming to the peak. You're gonna notice that this is getting closer together. You'll notice that as you've been going around and so you'll notice that the hole is filling in and as you do more you can see that the afghan is getting more solid in your hand as well. So let's move on and we're going to start with a standing single crochet. You've already got it marked on where the stitch marker is. So that's a great indication of where to begin. And so you'll do a standing single crochet, chain one and move the stitch marker into position so that it'll be in between. Okay, so we're going to continue down and in number seven here is that we're going to do the next 11 stitches that are all single crochet. So starting in the first one, so you'll do 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now as we continue here we're going to do the next two stitches as a two together half double crochet. The next two stitches are each going to are is going to be a two together double crochet. And this should take you to that special cluster. So around here what we want to do is a front post um, two together treble. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is wrap the hook twice and go behind that cluster and we're gonna make this as a front post. So pull through two and two and hold it. So don't finish it and do that one more time around that same stitch. Okay. So then you see three loops, pull through all three and that finishes that. So that becomes on there and that'll make it pop out. So let's go back up the other side starting right here and so it'll be a two um, together double crochet. And then the next two are two together for half double crochet. And then how many single crochets did we have going down? It was 11. So there should be 11 single crochets left to take you back to the top. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and that takes you to the corner. Okay, you can see it's marked. So then you'll do a single crochet, chain one, move that stitch marker up so that you can see that in the future where that corner is. And you'll do that with all of them of course. And then single crochet in and then you'll go down your 11 and do exactly the same thing. See, it's getting more and more rounded off. So continue that all the way around. This is round number seven and I'll be right back in just a moment. So pretending that I've gone all the way around I'm just coming up my 11 on this side and then I just going to join to the beginning standing single crochet. And so we're now going to end this color and move on to the color F as in Frank and F is in grass green again and we're gonna continue then to round number eight in just a moment. So let's move on to number eight and in number eight we are going to be playing with single crochets and we're gonna create chain two spaces that are gonna jump over. We're gonna bury those underneath the stitch work later on. So that's why we're doing extra chains and what you have to pay attention to the most is these extra um, stitches that we'll have. We're gonna do some really interesting work right here in the, the, the middle section here and then head our, head our way back up. So this round is gonna be very textured. Let's try number eight. Let's begin number eight right where the stitch marker is marked with the corner. That's where you're gonna begin and we'll do a standing single crochet. Chain one and let's move that stitch marker up again and then we're gonna single crochet back into that same corner. So now that the corner is in we're going to single crochet the next two stitches and let's begin the journey going down. So now we have to chain two, skip just one stitch and single crochet the next. Then we're going to chain two, skip the next stitch and single crochet the next. So you have a total count of two chain two spaces so far. So now you're going to chain a total of two, skip one and you're going to double crochet the next. So at this point you can see three chain two spaces. We're going to continue along and you're going to chain three and then we're gonna do a special cluster. So skipping the next one and we're gonna use the next two stitches and we're gonna do a two together um, cluster that's really interesting. So wrap the hook and you're skipping the one going in, pull through, pull through two and hold and do the same thing in the same stitch one more time. Now you're not quite done. You want to use the next stitch in the same way. So wrapping the hook, going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold and then the next one. And so you should see a total of five loops on the hook. So you're yarning over pulling it through all five. I need you now to chain three. So one, two, three and skip one stitch and the two stitches before the peak or before the valley here is going to be the same thing. So you're just gonna wrap the hook. So skipping one, going into the next and you're doing the same cluster work that you just did. So that one plus the next one. And then pull through all five loops. Now this base here you're going to make a front post um, treble. So wrapping the hook twice, you're gonna pull through two and two and hold and do it again. So wrap and it's a front post and once you can see that there's three loops left you pull through all three. And now we're gonna go up the other side in the same manner. So right where we're sitting we're gonna use the next two stitches that you have here and those will be the same cluster work that you just did. So wrapping the hook, you pull through and do the same stitch again. Then the very next one the same thing. So wrap and in, you do that twice and you'll have five loops again. Pull through all five. You'll now need to chain three and skip just one stitch and the next two you'll do the exact same thing. What was I thinking when I designed this, eh? <laughs> 
Okay, so let's take our time and go back up the other side. So it's completely opposite to what you just did. So we're going to now chain a total of three. One, two, three. Skip one and double crochet into the next. Chain just two. Skip one and single crochet the next. Chain two. Skip one and single crochet the next. And then you are going to um, just chain two, skip one and you'll single crochet into the last two before you get to the peak. So it should look like that. Once you get to the peak you're going to single crochet, chain one, move that stitch marker up so that you can find it again and then single crochet into the same. And you'll just move around your peaks and valleys like that and go all the way around on round number eight. So pretending I'm going all the way back around for number eight and I just have my single crochets before the corner. The corner is already done and you'll slip stitch to the first like so. And then you can get rid of that and I believe that we're doing a color change here. So this is row number eight. And so, so we're gonna move on to the color E as an elephant and we are going to move on to dark pink next. And we're gonna be doing that number nine. So we're gonna move on to number nine and number nine is right here and we're gonna do our single crochets and what we want to do is that we want a single crochet bearing in that chain two that we did. That will create those peekaboo. So you can see that we have um, some fun stuff going on uh, when it comes to that. So we have a kind of a single crochet here um, and you'll see that as we're going along. And so when we get to here it's gonna get a little confusing right in the beginning but we'll try and then we'll make our way back up the other side. So the goal for this is to make peekaboos as we go in number nine. So we're moving on to number nine and we're doing the color pink and this is going to make the green stand on its own uh, in a really neat way. So right where we have the stitch marker is our corner. So we're going to start off and in number nine we're going to do our last standing single crochet uh, for the peak. So after number nine what's gonna happen is that the top peaks are gonna start rounding off. So let's do our standing single crochet, chain one and let's move on our stitch marker so that we can find that in the future and single crochet back into the same one. So our goal is, is to work our way down this particular concept so that we can bury in some stitch work as we go. So we're going to single crochet into the stitches that you have. So you just continue along. So the first three and then you're gonna run into a chain space. So when you get to the chain space I just need you to single crochet here. So when you go there just put that chain two so that it gets stuck up underneath and that will create a visual separation then with that last color that you just played with. So then you'll single crochet the next one and then you'll single crochet back here bearing in the color again. So it's nice and easy. The last round, uh, last round was kind of confusing right? So we wanna continue to work our way down in that format. Now that we're on top of this double crochet this here is going to be special. So we're going to put in a two together when it comes to doing this. So we're gonna be using this stitch here and then we're also going to be using the front post of this. So we're just gonna wrap the hook coming down and we're gonna bury that chain three underneath. We're not gonna finish that stitch and then we're going to do a front post double crochet around this cluster. So wrap and go around the cluster. This will make that pop out. You're back to three loops on the hook, pull through all three. Now we're going to come down here for a double crochet bearing that chain again and we're going to be doing the front post of this. So wrap, just grab the post, pull through and then you got your three loops again. Once you have that done around this cluster here is just going to be a front post treble. And then we're gonna do the same thing going back up the other side. So this is what it's looking like so far. So let's do the other side. So start off here with the front post double around that but don't finish it and then double crochet down here. And then pull through all three. 
and then do that again. So front post around this, it's a two together and then a double crochet, uh, double crochet down here. Once that's done, you can just simply just don't have to worry about the counting so much but just start in your next double crochet and just single and then single here. Okay, so you're bearing in those chains as you go. That's why there's an extra number of chains so that you can bend that down towards doing what you need it to do. And then you'll come back up to the top. Okay, and then you got your corner. So you can see where it's marked. So you'll single crochet, chain one, move the earth um, stitch marker up and then single crochet back into that same one, the same corner and then work your way down. Okay, so you can see what's happening there. Isn't that neat? And so you can see it's really starting to sweep around. I want you to continue all the way back around. This is round number nine and I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So when you come back around, remember it should be all balanced with each other. Don't forget that that slip stitch can make it look like it's more. So you're just gonna slip stitch then to the top of the or to the beginning single crochet and then you're gonna end that color and we're going to begin then round number 10 and in round number 10 we're going to use the color D and in my case that'll be aqua once again. So let's get rid of this color and let's try aqua in a moment. Let's begin round number 10. We're going to be starting off and we're eliminating the idea of leaving spaces now in these top peaks. We're gonna start rounding off. So we're going to be putting in three single crochets into that space. I want you to put a stitch marker in the second one so that you can always maintain which is the one that you need to focus on when you're going to start new rounds. We're then going to do back post double crochet around uh, several of these stitches. Then in the base we're gonna be putting stitches together and then we're gonna be coming around. So we're gonna be getting more and more to the point where it's gonna end up into a circle. And let's begin doing round number 10. So let's continue to round number 10. A nice easy round. It's gonna have some texture to it. So right at the top here where you have this stitch marker you want to place in a standing single crochet. So you're gonna have a total of three single crochets all together in this piece and so you're no longer gonna have a space. So that was one and this is two and before you continue this is the second one move that stitch marker up so that you can find it in the future. You still need to keep an eye on the center of your, your peaks. And then you're going to single crochet again into the same spot like that. Okay, so you can see that it's marked. So make sure you do that when you get to the, your peaks. So for the next eight of these next stitches you're gonna make them each um, uh, a double crochet in the back post so it's right here. So double crochet in the back post because they're single crochets they can be a little bit tight so just go with it and make those as a single crochet in the back post. Okay, I'm just gonna move this stitch strand to the back. So that was one and you'll do the next. This is two. Three. Four. five, six, seven, and eight. Pretty cool right? So once you have your eight done we're gonna start putting stitches together. So the next two okay so you see where this post is that's the one. So what you have to concentrate is that you make sure that you get the right stitch. So it's this one and the next. Okay, so it's this one. I'm just looking at where I am. So the p this is the base. So if you're not sure just look at the top so you can see them. So it's a half double crochet over the next two. Then a double crochet over the next two. Whoops. So it's a double crochet two together. And then in the very one here this is going to be one um, What's it, what does it have? It has one double crochet by itself. And now we're gonna do the opposite to this side. So the next, the next two are together as a double crochet two together. And then double crochet the next two. 
this is sorry this is a half double crochet over the next two. And then starting in this one here it's going to be the next eight in a row that are each a back post double crochet. So let's count those out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight just like that and then you're gonna be in the middle one here. This is the peak. So you're going to put in three. So one and two. Move that stitch marker up to the second one so that you can find it in the future and then do one more. And then you're gonna go down again so it'll be eight and then do exactly what you did at the base. So it makes this actually give it a bit of line work as you're seeing and that's the whole point. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 10. I'll be right back. So I'm coming all the way around uh, at least pretending to and so I got my eight um, back post double crochets coming up. My corner it's already done and so I'm just gonna slip stitch to that first one. So remember that the actual corner is the next one over because it's been marked with the stitch marker so that I'll help you to see that. And so this is round number um, what are we at here? Round number 10. So round number 11. Uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna keep this color going one more time and we're gonna go on to number 11 and let's go back to the diagram and show you what to do next. So round number 11 what we're going to do is that we're going to slip stitch on over and then we're going to begin on the middle one. That's where it's been slip stitched. That's where it's been marked. So I still want you to keep marking that um, those there so that you can see those. And all we're just going to do is that we're just gonna come down in single crochet. We're gonna get a little bit taller and then we're gonna eliminate some stitches here at the, the base only and then come on all the way up. So it's gonna start really to smoothen off and I felt like having two rounds of the same color would be really helpful. So that's kinda why I decided that. In round number 11 we're going to slip stitch on over and then chain one and single crochet into the same one. So I want you to move that stitch marker to that single crochet that you have. Okay and so you'll be able to find that in the future. So in round number 11 what we're going to do is single crochet the next seven in a row. So we'll do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're gonna immediately jump to a double crochet. So we're gonna, th we're not gonna bother with half. So the next uh, three in a row are each double crochet. So one, two, and three. And now over the next three what we wanna do is that we wanna put those together as a double crochet three together. So just wrap the hook and put the next three together. Okay and now let's go back up the other side. So the first three that we start with is gonna be a double crochet each. So we have one, two, and three. And then we come up all the way to where you get to the center point here. So it's gonna be single crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and seven. And then this is the top peak. So you just get there, move your stitch marker up so that you can find that in the future. And then what you're gonna do from that point is to go back down again. Okay. So once that one's done you'll go seven down and then you'll do exactly what you did here and so you'll see that this color is gonna be nice and rich looking and it's, and it's gonna be quite bold. So please do that all the way around for round number 11. So I'm coming up all the way around in number 11 and just coming all the way back up. There will be seven coming back up if you recall and there this one is the marked one. So that's the very beginning. So slip stitch it to that one and then we are gonna get rid of this color and move on to B which in my case will be sunflower. And so that's what we'll do next. So let's move on to number 12. Let's begin number 12. Right where we're sitting, right where we're about to start we're going to do a back post single crochet. We're gonna do that one. 
Then we're gonna do the next three that way and then we're gonna single crochet all the way until we get to the middle three and we're gonna put the three uh, single crochets together at the base. And then we're gonna single crochet back up and then at the top peaks we're going to be doing this. So we're only eliminating right here at the base and you're gonna see this is gonna get more round. Let's try number 12 next. So you can see that we're getting more and more narrow and it's starting to really kind of fill in all the spots and so it's turning out well so far. So right where we have got it marked that is your first single crochet that you have and so that gives you the indication. So right where we need to do is around there. Okay and we're gonna do this with a standing back post double uh, single crochet. So we're just gonna put it onto the hook, pull through. So we just come from behind. Okay so we're grabbing the post from behind and then finishing it. And what I would strongly recommend is that move that stitch marker up so that you can find it. Make sure you get the right one. And we're gonna pull through that stitch there. Now the next three in a row are each gonna be a back post single crochet. So we have one, two, and three. Now the next six here are going to be single crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. The three middle are gonna be a single crochet three together. And then we go back up the other side so it's gonna be six going up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the three before here is each going to be a single crochet back post. So we have one, two, and three. And now this is the middle one. So let's just put the middle one in. It's a single crochet back post. Let's move up that stitch marker so we can find it. And then we go down the other side again. So you'll have your three back post single crochets. You'll have your six. You'll put your three together at the base and that's what it's gonna look like. So continue that all the way around. This is lucky round number 12. So continuing around with number 12 uh, what we want to do is you got your three uh, single crochets in the back post. This is the beginning. So make sure that you just attach it with a slip stitch. We're gonna keep this color going on one more time. And we still have our stitch marker so make sure that's still in, in the space and let's go back to the diagram for round number 13. In round number 13 we're going to just chain one right where we are and single crochet that one plus the next three in a row. We're going to be doing the regular size popcorn that we did in the octagon in the next stitch and then the next two are going to be a single crochet by itself and then we'll put two double crochets together or, okay and then we'll put the next three together and then the next two and then two and etc. So let's just do this and this is round number 13 using the same color. So round number 13 here we go. So we're going to chain up one and you'll single crochet into the same one. Move that stitch marker up so that you can find it in the future. So it's ready to go and so then you will have then the next three as a single crochet. So one, two, and three. The next stitch here will be a regular size popcorn. So there will be five double crochets into the same stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay get that and go back to the fifth one and pull it through and chain one to lock it. So now that the popcorn's in it's gonna squat down so the next two in a row are single crochet and then we're gonna put a two together for double crochet over the next two. Now we're now gonna put three together for double crochet over the middle span here. and then work our way back up the other side. So the next our two will be used together as a two together double crochet. You'll single crochet the next two and then a popcorn into the next. 
So there's five double crochets that make up a popcorn. Okay, pull through, chain one to lock it and then after that last popcorn is in you are going to single crochet the next three. So one, two and three and that takes you to the middle spot that you can see. So then single crochet that one and move the stitch marker up so you can find it. And then continue then around with what you already know going down and then back up. So please do this all the way around for round number 13. So I'm coming up all the way around to number 13 and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the beginning like that. We're gonna get rid of this color and bef uh, we already have the stitch marker moved up so we can see that in the future and then we're gonna begin number 14 and we're really gonna be starting to get uh, very close to the center point of the circle. So just get rid of this yarn and round number 14 we're moving on to the color G and in my case it'll be the gray mix once again. So as we move on to round number 14 what we're going to do is that you can see that we have a small indentation still left. You see the stitch markers? You can kind of really see how we're uh, bringing ourselves into a full circle. So let's uh, move on to number 14 and I'll take you back to the diagram next. So number 14 here we go. We're gonna just start off here and in number 14 we're gonna do a standing uh, single crochet in the same as the joining that we did and with the color G and then we're gonna do that one and then we'll have um, a total of four single crochets in a row. We'll put two together for double crochet. We'll put three double crochet together here at the base, two double crochet together and then making our way back up. So let's begin number 14. So let's begin number 14. We're gonna start with a standing single crochet. It's the same one that you have the stitch marker in and so you'll do that with a standing single crochet. So now you're going to put in the, uh, the next four as single crochets. So we have one, two, three and four. And then you're going to put in a double crochet two together over the next two. And then you're already here at the, the base area. So there's gonna be a total of three together double crochet here. Okay, and you pull through all three. Then you'll start back up on the other side. So you're gonna have a two together for double crochet to start and then you'll have a total of four going up on this side. So we have one, two, three and four and the next stitch should be the corner which it's marked with the stitch marker. So then do that one. S move your stitch marker up so you can find it in the future and then continue in the same manner going down like that. Okay, so you'll go down your four and then you'll put your two together your three together, two together and then four back up. Please do this all the way around for round number 14. So I'm coming back up on the other side and I'm just gonna attach it then here and we are then going to go into round number 15 next and in round number 15 what we need to do is get rid of this yarn and we need to turn it back to the wrong side because remember when we did this down here with this um, crinkles we're gonna do it one more time and we're gonna be using the color um, C as in cat and that will be the color purple for me. So let's do that and let's turn our blanket over to the wrong side and we're gonna begin doing number 15 next. So round number 15 is marked in red so that means that it's on the wrong side. That's my meaning for that. So we're gonna start off and we have to go in the opposite direction. So let's just take a look at this one. This is the middle point. It would be marked with the stitch marker. So we're going to do half the, sorry, we're gonna do a single crochet in the first. We're gonna be doing a treble, single and a treble and then we are not gonna be eliminating any stitches here on the base at all. So we're just gonna continue with that same manner going all the way to this top. So we just gotta keep an eye on the peaks as we go around. So we're actually technically not eliminating any stitches but what we're doing is that we're just building it out just a little bit more and let's begin to do number 15. So let's begin number 15 and we're on the back of the blanket and you can tell for my loose ends 
So we wanna start off in the peak. It's been marked with the stitch marker if you've been really good about that and you wanna do a standing single crochet. Now you're going to single crochet the next and then you're going to start with your trebles. So you'll continue that. So you don't really have to keep too much of a count on it because you, all you have gotta look for is these peaks that are marked. So a treble and then a single and the next and then a treble. So we're not eliminating any stitches there on the base. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on the stitch marker when it comes back around. Okay, and it's right over here. So you'll be able to count five trebles that will pop out and so then when you get to the top here, so after the last single crochet is in, you're going to do the top. You'll move your stitch marker so that you can find that again in the future. Okay, it's right there and then go down the other side. So if you just need to turn it over so that you can make sure that you have your five trebles in, that is really helpful and then you continue in the same manner. So once the top is one is done, single crochet the next and then treble, single and treble and etc. until you get to the next peak and so on. So please do that all the way around. This is round number 15. So in coming back around the one before the one you started is a single crochet. You'll just join it like that. Okay and this was lucky round number 15. We have two more rounds to do in today's tutorial and so after this round is done, please turn your work back over to the right side of the work and we're going to begin round number 16 next. So as you go for number 16, we're gonna be starting up and we're going to move our way around and we're just gonna concentrate on those ones that are in the middle there. We're gonna make that as a three together double crochet and so it's a nice easy sloping and then number 17 we're gonna pick up and go in a complete circle. Let's do number 16 first. So number 16 we're gonna pick up and we're going to start right where the peak is and we're just going to start and we're going to do a standing single crochet. So now we're going to do a single crochet in the next four. So we have one and move this stitch marker up while you're here so that you can find it in the future. So one, two, three and four. Once you're in there, the middle one here that you can see the three middle will be a three together double crochet. And then you'll do your four going back up the other side. So we have one, two, three and four and the next one is the peak. So move your stitch marker up one more time. And we're gonna be eliminate, eliminating out stitch markers coming up really soon. So just continue down in that same motion and you're gonna be almost close to a, a perfect circle by the time you get all the way around and let's continue that and I'll see you at the end of number 16 in a moment. Pretending that I've gone around again the last four before the um, beginning is um, single crochet and then you're just going to join it Okay, and you're going to eliminate this color. So you're going to notice, I know it's harder to tell in this sample, but you're gonna be pretty much to a circle, but the final round, number 17 in today's tutorial, is that we are gonna be in a full circle by the time we get around the next one. So let's begin that. We're going to move on to the color um, E as an elephant, and that will be the color uh, dark pink for me. So round number 17, here we go. So we're going to just start where we've been leaving off and so we'll be starting at the stitch marker and 
I don't know if you need to use the stitch markers anymore but if you want to um, you can it's up to you. Uh, but this one here what we want to do is a standing double crochet. So put it onto the hook, wrap it first and then going into the one that's marked and then pull through two and two and pull things nice and tight. All you need to do, you don't have to bother counting on this round but it's one double crochet in each of the stitches. And so this is going to pull in the remaining of the hump that is kind of like just drooping just ever so slightly and this is going to make it into a perfect circle so that you can continue. So I'm going to be leaving you a really soon on this video and we're gonna be moving on to part uh, four in the next one and we are going to move on from that from rounds number 18 through 26. Um, it's gonna be, th that video will be relatively short because the repeating to go around is really quite simple and fun. Um, lots of texturing is right in the very ending of this and you'll notice that this will have a nice beautiful semi or circle by the time you do this. So please do this all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment to finalize today's video with you. Pretending that I've gone all the way around, I just wanna fill in each of the stitches and then I wanna join it to the beginning with a slip stitch and then we're going to eliminate this color out. So this is where I'm gonna leave you on today's video. Um, you don't have to worry about those stitch markers anymore. Uh, you'll be able to tell where you stopped and start for the rounds and then you're going to notice is that we're gonna go in a continuous um, decrease then as we get ourselves to the center point. Um, it's gonna be really quite um, a lot more faster of course to finish off your blanket and this is where I'm gonna leave you. So if you wanna leave in your stitch markers you can but I think that you can pull them out and I will leave that in your capable hand. So let's have a recap and just in a moment. So to recap what we did is that we continued along this here on the octagon and we've been getting ourselves more and more narrow. So this is just a section of this whole thing that goes all the way around and you can see that it starts off pretty pointy and then it gets more and more sweeping to the point where it starts to level off here and by the time you get all the way to the top here you'll be in a continuous circle. So this is where I'm gonna leave you today and we're gonna see you next time on the next video in part number four as we continue the journey. So this is it. This is the study of possibilities and I'm your host Mikey and thank you so much for joining me today. We'll hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.